Hi everyone, welcome back. My name is Cold Blue Light. Thank you for joining me today. Uh, last time we made some buttons and a panel, and we got some scrolling text going. This time I have broken those pieces up so that they're reusable components across scene, and you can change different things about it without affecting uh, the base bit so that you don't have to constantly go back and remake the same uh, pieces over and over again. And I've also generated a nice character portrait for the game down here at the uh, bottom right of our text box. So let's give our game a run and take a look at it. So here we go. Our game starts up and our portrait and all that shows in the bottom. And if we click the button, it's just like last time it goes to the next scene and draws some more text. So, uh, like, like I said, we're going to be breaking pieces up now. That way we can create some reusable pieces. We're going to be doing this using the uh, instancing uh, node button right here. And this will let you instance scenes into other scenes so that you can reuse pieces of it. So let's take a look at what I've done down here. I've further organized our folders. I now have a folder for characters for uh, the user interface for portraits that will the characters will be using and then later on I need to make one for backgrounds but uh, I have our backgrounds we used the last time still down here let's take a look at our first UI scene the panel alright so inside of our panel uh, UI scene all we have is the plain panel that we made last time which is just our background for our stuff and a button uh, but if you notice, our button has a little icon right here. This is called a signal, and it's showing that this node has a signal connected. And what I've done is connected its signal to the uh, dialog UI. That way we can uh, tell when this button gets pressed. So what we did here is I clicked on the button. And then over on our inspector here, if you click node, you can see a, a group of things called signals and you can click a signal in this case I have pushed right here and it's connected uh, it'll give you an option let's look down here see connect and if I press uh, let's say focus entered actually let's do draw just for an example we'll say draw will connect and we'll, we'll connect it to our panel node and then hit connect and now we have a uh, new function created inside of our script here for the panel called on draw and this will send a signal to the uh, but from the button to the panel kind of let, letting them communicate with each other different events that's going on so let's go ahead and uh, disconnect that because I don't want to use that right now so I'm going to hit disconnect and that should automatically disconnect it and if we go back inside of our script for the panel uh, we can see that the function is still there, but we're going to remove it, and I'm going to save it. Uh, up here we have the same same thing we had in our button the last time: uh, get tree, and then change scene next scene. Uh, but but now we can change this inside of the editor using the export. Um, I'm not, I don't want to call it a variable, but it's a keyword. Put export in front of a variable, okay? So if you put export in front of a variable, in this case we have export variable next scene, and it's a string. Uh, our dialog panel will now gain access to that string. So that back here in our school scene, let's take a look again back here in our school scene, if we click our dialog panel, we'll see that our next scene is set to res because res is the root folder for our game. Slash slash scenes because that's where our scenes are stored. And then we have another slash schoolyard.tscene because that's the next scene in our sequence of scenes. I hope that's not too confusing, but basically that's just our folder path right there. And because we've used um, export beside the variable we now have access to this uh, to, to change uh, scenes in different scenes alright so that's all we've done for the panel let's take a look at uh, our chat box our chat box is set up similar to our panel 
we just have a new scene and inside the scene I created a, a chat box and it still has our uh, chatter limit accessible over here as you can see it's the same text as last time we still use the chatbox.gd uh, GD script that we wrote last time and it's just exporting our chatter limit which is um, how many characters get drawn in the chat box so nothing here has changed chat box is just now a scene by itself that way we can instance it into other scenes and change um, change the chatter limit and change the uh, text that gets stored inside of here uh, also take notice that visible character is left to one here so that uh, that was a, a mistake by by me I just uh, forgot to change it but it's no big deal because it's instanced inside of our um, our schoolyard scene here the chat box is uh, set to work default visible character is zero and you can see our text is here and running this scene will work just like it did the last time it prints out the text one line at a time okay so we have uh, some button signals set up we now have access uh, to our next scene variable inside of our dialog panel UI so that whenever we recreate the chat dialog panel the chat UI dialog panel in another scene we can change uh, anything about it let me show you what I'm talking about I hope this isn't too 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 I'm tripping on my words today too too confusing I hope I've explained this good enough but let's take a look I'll show you one last time what I'm talking about just in case I'm gonna make an, a whole new scene here uh, our scenes folder is starting to grow so we'll uh, eventually add more folders to organize that better but let's go ahead and make a new scene scene new scene okay and it's just blank right now no big deal we'll just use a node 2d as a root node and now clicking the instant scene button we will instance a scene of our scene slash UI scene because that contains our panel and you can see we have our panel here and I'm going to unlock it so I can move it around I'm just going to set it right here and if I added a sprite background once again just like this sprite uh, we're just going to call this temp pg let's use let's reuse a texture here I don't want to load in any more textures uh, not at not at this moment anyway we'll just reuse the first scenes uh, school texture and uh, I'll uh, recenter this so that it lines up with everything in our scene let's scroll this over some and down just a bit and then over just a little bit more and I will set the Z index to be a negative value so our panel is now the foreground element and I'm gonna lock it so we don't accidentally move it let's move our text box here uh, we'll now see that in our dialog UI we can change the scenes so we're gonna type in res and uh, semicolon slash slash scenes C E N E S and then we're gonna go back to school dot scene okay T S C N and that's done if we click off of it or hit enter it'll save it for us and and it was like I was saying because we use the export variable our and our UI dialog box is now an instance of itself because it's left blank inside of our uh, scene that we're instancing from we can now set it in any scene to go between scenes when we press the buttons and it's the same for our dialog UI let's go ahead and save this scene I'm going to save this scene temporarily under scenes as uh, our uh, setup scene as test setup or something test set yeah there we go uh, test set dot scene we'll save that uh, and now we'll do one more instance of our chat box so I'm clicking right here this little link 
and I'm going to instance the chatbox.tc. Okay, and you can see it's brought it into our uh, our scene we just made here, and we can move it around. So I'm just going to move it down to here to uh, line up with stuff. And a neat thing about this being an instance is you can change all kinds of properties about the uh, chat box here, but without affecting it in other scenes. So let's uh, say woo, um, and instance exclamation mark smiley face okay and we're, we will set its visual characters to zero again because our script will take care of printing those out uh, so what about our uh, what about our portrait well the portrait right now is temporary temporarily I have it set up just like our chat box in our uh, dialog panel it is also an instance so let's instance a new portrait into here uh, if you'd also like to keep your dialog UI and your chat box together so you can move them as one you can just drag and drop like that uh, I like keeping the portrait separate though so I'm gonna click back up here and say add and I'm gonna instance it from portraits uh, slash character portrait character UI dot TC and there's our portrait and it's just a simple sprite and another simple sprite for the background and I generated the character using a program that I have so let's make it look neat and we're just going to drag her over here and this is uh, <laughs> the character I call Betalia by the way uh, because this is very beta this is uh, uh, how you prototype your games uh, let's set her Z index to be 1 so that she's on top of our uh, dialog panel and whatnot and if we save and go back to schoolyard we can now set this one's uh, next scene to be res semicolon slash slash scenes slash test set dot t s c n okay and starting over from the beginning running our main scene we should now be able to see a progression so if I hit skip we go to the next scene and then skip woo I'm an instance and skip one more time should start it all over again and now you guys know how this setup is working that's all I wanted to show you guys today I'm gonna to be working on uh, extending this a bit uh, you, let me show you one last thing while I'm thinking about it. Let's take a look at the character portrait scene. Like I said, it's just two sprites. The sprite, the first sprite is our character's portrait, and the second sprite's our background. And there's nothing too special going on here. But you can add things on your own, like an animated. Let's see, sprite animated. You can have an, an animated sprite here, so you can have the character. Uh, move their mouth and whatnot. It doesn't have to be a static sprite. So you guys play around and experiment and just see where you can progress from here. This was a really short bit I just wanted to talk about today while I work on the next part. Uh, our next part we're going to need to tackle uh, our next bit of uh, visual novel development because I guess at this point that's what it is. We're making a visual novel or I'm making a visual novel you guys can even use these parts in non-visual novels these elements are common across many games top-down shooters RPGs even puzzle games have some sort of dialogue and UI so this is reusable stuff that you guys can take into your own projects and make your own stuff out of uh, but anyway, the next thing I'll be working on is saving and loading dialogue and maybe a couple of other stuff. Uh, it might take a couple of days, but I'll get it out to you guys as soon as I can. That's all I wanted to talk about today. I hope this helps you out a little bit. If it does, hit that like button and subscribe and share this video around. I appreciate you guys coming. My name's Cold Blue Light, and I'll see you next time.